Welcome, welcome to the uh, BioWare PAX West 2018 panel. Uh, we're going to get started shortly. I'm just going to give you a talk about what we're going to do today real quick. So if you please stow your gear, make sure that people can sit down. There's people falling in. Um, if you turn your phone onto self-reflect mode, let it think about what it's done over the last year silently. You're worried. That's a thing. It's not. Um, there's some big questions out there in the world today. Like, how is a studio known for story and character going to apply these things to a, to a co-op game? Or likewise, in multiplayer, you have these big shared worlds. How do you illustrate the consequence of choice in these big shared worlds? These are our questions. And the studio, she keeps her secrets for like five minutes, because we have a wonderful set of developers who are going to be here to tell you all about a concept of our world, my story. And we also have the elegant and powerful Nick Terabay here. He will be hosting our events. He plays Halleck in the game. He's delightful. He won't keep them in control. No. Um, after the panel, there will be time for Q&A here in the, in the hall. Uh, if you don't get your questions answered, don't worry. There will be an Ask Me Almost Anything this evening with our producers, Mark Dara and Mike Gamble. And so uh, to kick things off, now that everyone's settled, just buckle up, buckaroos. We've got some never seen before uh, video from Anthem to kick us off. Have a great time and thanks for being here. At the heart of Anthem is the concept of our world, my story. The unique combination of a dynamic, ever-changing world and a powerful personal story. In our world, you band together with friends for epic adventures across a vast shared landscape teeming with danger. The world narrative advances for your whole team. Together, you'll confront countless enemies, those who threaten to take control of the Anthem, as well as ancient beasts. And you'll get further into our world by taking on explosive missions offered by agents who need your help. These missions take you deep into the heart of Anthem, while also developing the personal stories of each agent. Trust me, I'm a person you want to know. Outside of the battles, there's free play, a chance for you to explore solo or with friends, uncover answers to your questions about Anthem, and find powerful artifacts that could lead you to victory down the road. Back within the safety of Fort Tarsus is where my story begins. This is your chance to develop a richly personal narrative where your choices have consequences. In this bustling trader town, you'll develop bonds with your pit crew who can help you prepare for future battles. They're the people in the world who have your back. And as your relationships develop, you'll learn about their pasts and the future they hope to see. Fort Tarsus is ripe for exploration as well. You may even encounter shadowy figures with questionable character. It all depends on the decisions you make. This is real-time storytelling, a reinvention of personal narrative in a multiplayer game. As a freelancer, you are the bridge between the heroic adventures discovered in our world and the personal journey that unravels in my story. And ultimately, the key to the fate of everyone. Yeah! You're live! You're live! You're live, so make it loud! Make it count! That's right! That's right! Oh, yeah! How you guys doing? That's right! For who doesn't know, I am Nick Tarabay. And I play, where is he? Oh, he's not there. There's a Halleck character there that is super handsome, that is super attractive, and just a badass all around. 
<laughs> so pretty much me, you know, that's what, uh, that's what that was. But anyway, guys, I just want to tell you a little bit before all the geniuses come up. They are fucking brilliant. But I just want to tell you a little bit. I've, I've, as you all know, most of the stuff that I do is film and television, right? All the shows that I've done, film and television and theater. So when Caroline, our lovely, lovely director, asked me, she was like, do you want to host a game that, you know, our anthem game? I'm like, I don't, I, I'm like how, is, how, how are the fans? Are they, are, they, are they good? She's like, well, they're very passionate, they're very wild, and they're very crazy. So I was like, fuck yeah, I wanna come. That's like my middle name, passionate and crazy. I was like, I wanna be here. I'm so happy, you have no idea, I'm so happy. This is my first game, and I'm sure it's not gonna be my last game. I am so happy to, to meet you guys. I've never met the gaming world. I'm so, so blessed, and I'm very, very happy. Thank you so much for coming. And, and, and just so you know, you are in. Okay, start again, what the heck? Uh, stop. All right, all right, all right, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll continue. Just so you know, you are in for a treat. Let me tell you something, this game, holy shit. It is so good. I mean, you have no idea the details, the, how far they went into the depth of the detail, the direction. The writing, the story, I'm telling you, by the end of this, you guys going to be, you're going to feel what, what we felt, which is like a family. We felt like a family. It's so good. I mean, you see a lot of games most of the time, the stories are right. But the action is great. But this, you get everything. And, and even the actors, I cannot wait for you guys to meet the rest of the actors. They're just brilliant. They're just brilliant people. Our director is just amazing. And you're about to meet the guys that who behind all of this, which to me, I can barely send emails. So when I see this, I'm like, what the fuck did you do this? <laughs> anyway, are you guys ready to get to know Anthem a little bit better? <laughs> you can do more. Come on, gaming, you can do more. Yeah, here you go. All right, guys, come on up. Get my phone one second. <laughs> All right, please, everybody, introduce yourselves to the lovely fans. So I'm Mark Dara. Uh, I'm the executive producer for Anthem. I'm Kathleen Rootsart, and I'm one of the co-writers, uh, co-lead writers with Anthem. And I'm Victor Krengel. I'm the level design director for Anthem. Hi, I'm Sabina. I'm one of the level designers for Anthem, working for Tarsis. I'm Mike Gamble, one of the lead producers on Anthem. I'm Nick Tarabay, the handsome guy in Anthem. Just in case you forget, I'm just going to remind you. No problem. All right, let's get us started off with the first question. And by the way, guys, after we finish, don't be shy. Ask questions. We're going to turn it to the fans, so ask questions after that. All right, don't be shy. All right, first question. Who or what is a freelancer and who they're fighting? So you are a freelancer. Um, you are uh, a freelancer refers to a specific group of people that get into javelin suits, um, and you represent one of those freelancers. I'll let other people speak a little bit. So uh, freelancer is not really a military organization. You're more of a ragtag group of people who um, uh, espouse and carry on the tradition of freelancers from. Uh, General Tarsus like 500 years ago and so you go out and you make the world a safer place for all of the people of Fort Tarsus because the world is crazy chaotic and it will try to kill you uh, can we bring up the the our world shot and I'll be doing this throughout the the panel I'll be calling up screenshots and videos and stuff like that so I will interrupt all of you at least 25 times <laughs> Um, so yes, our world, this is, this is an example of a freelancer squad. Here you have the storm on the left, you have the Colossus kind of right in the center, behind them you have the Ranger, and then you have the Interceptor on the right. So that, that kind of makes up the different uh, uh, javelins that the freelancers can pilot. And of course, like, like the rest of these awesome folks said, freelancers are loosely organized groups of people. So essentially what you'll see with a freelancer squad is sometimes you'll have a cipher, 
which is a person who communicates with the freelancers in the field. Sometimes you'll have a person who takes care of the freelancers in terms of how the javelins are maintained and the striders that they go through the world are maintained. So it's kind of, it's a, it's a soft family. And, you know, in, in Anthem, you get to learn about the characters in that family. Absolutely. When you come into the story, the freelancers are a little down on their luck. Um, and you will help to build them up. You'll be part of that group. I think freelancers are the heroes of this story, this world. They take on missions that no one else might dare to take, and they do it for the people of Anthem. Yeah, you'll be part explorer and part knight, um, going out there and, and making a difference in the world. Could we load up the uh, crew shot, please? So as part of that family, yeah. like we kind of mentioned it, there we go, we, got, um, we have Owen kind of right near the camera there. Owen is the cipher for the team. And uh, as you start playing the game, you realize a lot more about Owen, um, how you know him, and your, de your relationship develops a lot in the, in the course of that. And then on the far right, we have Faye. Kathleen, can you talk a little bit about Faye? Uh, so Owen and Faye are both ciphers, but they come from different sort of cipher worlds. Ciphers are uh, people that, um, because of uh, the shaper world, the world of the, of the crazy gods who have created this world, they um, have sort of uh, super telepathic, telecommunicating uh, abilities, and, but they need to go to school to kind of hone those. So Owen has gone to the community college kind of uh, <coughs> version of that, and <laughs> Faye has gone to the Harvard of that. <laughs> And uh, they are both people that um, they guide you. A cipher guides you through your mission. So as you go out on many of the missions, um, whether they're small missions or large, mi large missions, your ciphers are the ones who are, um, they're back in Fort Tarsus in something we called an amplifier chair. And they are the ones that are um, parsing information at incredible speed so that they can uh, help you on your missions. Yeah, they'll help you to guide you while you're on missions. They'll do scanning of the environment. They'll help you to identify threats and incoming, uh, in incoming problems you might have to deal with. Yeah. Um, they're really your guides. Uh, a thing with enormous uh, teeth and a big mouth around the corner. They'll yeah. be the ones to warn you. And then, and then, of course, there's, last but not least, there is Halleck, the guy who's kind of... Yeah, you damn right, there's Halleck. Halleck. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. And so Halleck here, too. I think we're out of time. We don't have yeah, time exactly. to talk about Halleck. Can you, so see, can you see Halleck up there? Is, that, is he shown yet? Yeah. There he is. Uh -huh. So you'll notice he wears a uh, nipple-chafing um, <laughs> bandolier. That's and because they can't contain me. That's why yes. that sound. Nick, Nick That's actually why. asked for He's going to be a badass character. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's Halleck. So uh, Kathleen, let's talk about Halleck a little bit. And let's try and, you know, just... Remember, I have the power. <laughs> I was on Spartacus. I have the power <laughs> to move Halleck. the microphone away from you guys. That's all. <laughs> Halleck is perhaps one of those, the most amazing characters that Bioware has ever written. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Halleck, uh, Halleck is a freelancer. Halleck is also a freelancer. And early in the game, uh, you are on a team with Halleck. And you uh, head into one of the most dangerous missions that you will ever take on in the course of the game. And so he, you and, he's like a legend, actually, in the freelancer world. And so he's a, a guy that you want to be more like frankly. Uh, he's Pretty super, much like me in real life, you know. He's that. super smart. He's, um, he's intuitive. He's, he's buff. He's tattooed. And he's also grumpy. Yeah, he's grumpy. Yeah, he's kind of grumpy. But, but remember, I don't eat, yeah. the characters that we write in no way, shape, or form have to resemble their real life. <laughs> like, it's totally fine. But yeah. Yeah, yeah he's, uh, he's uh, not exact. He, He's a mentor, and yet he doesn't want to be your teacher. He's a legend in his own right. I'm, I'm getting a little emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a minute. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to take a minute. All right. Um, ask another question. What can you do in Fort Tarsus? You can do lots of things. <laughs> you can talk with people. You can discover things. And this is the greatest way to actually explore the lore and get to know the world a little bit deeper as well, get to know the backgrounds, the hardships of people in this world. So there's a, a lot of emotions, I would say. 
So in this screenshot, there's a, there's a lot to unpack here, but most importantly, you'll see that there's a puddle right in the ground, right in the middle of that. <laughs> so, so before we move on, there's a 98% chance that that puddle is gonna be changed, moved, reduced. <laughs> Don't touch my puddle. <laughs> So now that we got that out of the way, <laughs> let's talk about what we see. Like, I'll try and keep it there. <laughs> I really will. Yeah. Um, so um, Tarsus is also where a lot of the meta of the, the game lives. So that's where your, your, your vendor characters live. Uh, that's where you're going to go to modify your javelins and, uh, and do personalization. Um, that's where, where you re go to regroup and restock in between missions. And of course, you will have conversations that are deep and engaging. Um, you can choose to engage in those uh, at your own pace and in your own way, um, and you'll get to know the, the, the community of Fort Tarsus. Um, yeah, it's uh, definitely exciting. Uh, yeah, they, and in fact, the characters actually cross-pollinate. A character you meet here might um, be involved in a story over here. It's a, it's a real living community. Yeah, it's also a place you'll pick up the missions that you take when you go out into the game. Um, you'll be able to choose who you, who you play with, and usually when you're picking up a mission with, uh, with someone, they'll be your agent while you're out in the field, give, um, giving you guidance through, through the Cypher communication network. Yeah. Um, so you build relationships with them through the missions and also when you come back to Tarsus, and something might have changed when you come back to. So there's, you guys saw this in the trailer a little bit, but we really are kind of focusing on, on, on meshing together two ways of amazing storytelling in our game. So the first way you guys are, are very familiar with, you see you can play with your friends, you can go out in the world, there's these cool world events and storms, day, night, and that is common between everyone who's playing the game. And that's what we call our world, so we share that. So on a moment's notice, if you want to make it rain, you want to make it rain, it'll rain. And then everyone will basically be able to play in that world that we've done. And of course we can do amazing things in that. But we, we, we struggled with this when we were developing, you know, how, how to put the game together. We still wanted to tell a Bioware quality story. We wanted to give you agency. We wanted to f make you feel like you understood the characters, had the opportunity to, to really, really kind of engage with them. But in a multiplayer game, that's tough. So that's how the whole my story thing came about. And that's where Tarsus really grew from. So you'll see, like, like everyone kind of mentioned, Tarsus is a place where you can interact with characters. You can make decisions, you can make choices, you can role play, and you don't have to do that when you're with your friends. When you're ready to go out on a mission, that's when you join your friends and that's when you go. So, I mean, there's a lot of different Tarsus in there, but we'll show more as we go through this, this panel. You know, I didn't know about the rain thing. That's pretty awesome, by the way. <laughs> All right, um, you, kind of, you guys kind of touched on that a little bit about the characters, but just maybe furthermore, just tell us about the characters, uh, you know, the guys in the pit crew and the agents, you know, so if you can tell us a little bit more. Yeah, so the agents are the characters who are going to give you the majority of your missions. Um, they, they serve different factions, um, uh, whether it is uh, Corvus, our sort of CIA, um, uh, special special forces kind of uh, um, group or Yaro who we have here who is he is a an old freelancer who remembers a time when the freelancers were a lot more important a lot more well respected and he's trying to restore uh, the the freelancers to that former glory uh, these are the characters that you are going to interact with a lot uh, build relationships with and uh, and and really form friendships and, uh, um, and, and an understanding of what their motivations are over the course of the game. Yeah. So can we showcase the second video a little bit and then we can talk over it a bit? Sure. Is a, uh, an ex-Corvus agent. This is Matthias. Yeah, you just missed him, but he's one of the Arcanist faction. Um, oh, Arcanists are sort of um, research scientists. They want to find out more about the Shapers. Yeah. And because each faction has a very different character, they'll send you out on missions which are themed to fit their character. So when you go out with an Arcanist, you'll be like exploring the deep places of the Earth, learning about the depth of the lore. Um, if you go out with a freelancer, you'll be working to restore the freelancer faction. Even though they belong to certain factions, they all have their own unique individual personality to discover too. Yeah. 
and you can you'll role play with them as you go through the game. Actually, let's play it one more time because there's a lot of stuff in there that folks probably didn't didn't get. Um, as you play through the game, you build relationships with them. You learn more about who they are, their past, um, and Tarsus will actually change based on mission progression with each with each of them. Uh, so you see, there's a uh, uh, left trigger, right trigger choice. So there is choice in the game. The choice will have consequences depending on who you talk to and, and when you do. Um, right there, you see kind of the mission briefing panels, and, and that'll just give you extra context about the game, and they'll go into your cortex, which is kind of like the old codex, if you're familiar with our, our previous games, or Mass Effect, rather. Anything else you guys want to add to this? Uh, all, all, I, I... all those conversations can chain into each other and, and have effects on how... Um... Different, different people talk to each other and relate to each other inside of Fort Tarsus. But also the thing about the mission panels, uh, they also allow you to get sort of a quick briefing. So if you want to come into Fort Tarsus, you have your friends waiting for you to go out on a mission together, you can just gather that information quickly and head out. You don't need to uh, go through uh, role-playing conversations in order to get to... Um, active mission content. Yeah, you know, and really one of the things we're trying to get with my story is allowing you to consume this content at your own pace. Yeah. Um, if you are someone that really wants to, to linger in the conversations and think about the choices you're making and explore these relationships, you can do it without keeping people waiting that they can go off and they can do other things with other people. Um, but if you're someone that just wants to quickly get back into the action, you can move through these conversations very quickly and get back uh, out into, uh, op into the open world. Yeah, and our mission content reflects that philosophy uh, very deeply as well. There are, there are missions that are much more tailored towards action and high-paced combat, some which are tailored more towards story and, and really engagement with your team. Um, and then there is also free play, which is a space you can just go out into and explore at your own pace, on your own if you wish. Right, with little treasures, little lore treasures to find yeah, it's, it's, as you go. It's yeah. filled with lore, um, codexes for you to pick up and read more about the world. Um, also, one of the things that I love most about our world is the depth. It is a truly three-dimensional world. Um, you can look at a mountain and go, yep, I'm going to the top. Or you can look at, a, look at a lake and go, right, I'm going right down to the bottom of that lake and there'll be caves and all that kind of stuff. I think you've seen some of it on the, on the shots. Yep. Can we load up the balcony shot too? Because that's a, a cool one in Fort Tarsus. That, oh, yeah. So that, that person um, in the foreground there, that's actually an example of one of the, the pilots that you can choose from. Um, there is a character customizer in the game and you can choose from uh, preset heads at this point and we'll, we'll talk more about that later. But that's just an example of... of an area of Tarsus and kind of the detail that you expect to see there. Cool, but uh, let's get back to Halleck for a second. <clears throat> <laughs> and I think it's a question that everybody um, been been dying to ask, and by everybody I mean me. Uh, <clears throat> no romance? Yeah. I mean, so everybody was asking, especially with Halleck, you know how handsome he is. <laughs> right before I came here, everybody was like, can we just touch you can we like uh, Rome can we so what's going on guys I want to smell him more than touch him. Uh, tell, it's non-stop <laughs> smell touch can I, I look at you twice uh, it's just there so what's going on ways to get to know someone and there might be more ways than just have an intimate relationship with someone so this is a way to project the hardships of the people in the world and maybe would ease their pain if you <laughs> do go that far, but let's help them right here and now. They have their own story, they have their own relationships. Maybe you shouldn't intervene all the time. Yeah. There's also <laughs> absolutely nothing to stop you crushing on people in the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, who are you as a freelancer just kind of blow through town and then romance everyone? I mean, we don't... Really uh, do Halleck. Yes, well. <laughs> uh, it looks like that kind of guy, but whatever, anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean there's, there's a lot of different relationships that we, we plan on emphasizing and, you know, where we leave those relationships at the end of the game, you know, we're leaving things open for a number of different reasons, um, which you will all see in the, in the coming months and years after we, we launch the game. Uh, but needless to say, there's a, there's a lot of ways that you can develop close bonds and friendships with people. And, and what we wanted to do with Anthem is we want to focus on that. Um, 
And uh, uh, the, the reference that our writers and our, our creative folks sometimes use is, is Downton Abbey. If you're familiar with Downton Abbey, it's like there's, there's not a lot of characters there. I mean, there's, there's enough, but everyone has a unique, interesting story. And Connect to other stories. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, and Kathleen and her team and Sabina and her team and Victor and his team have, have tried to build out all of those so that when you play it, you can really kind of get into it. One of the things that the structure of the game um, really lets us do is a lot more character storytelling after launch. Um, in previous games, because of the, way, the structure of the way we released content, uh, we didn't really know where you were in a relationship with a character, and it meant we had to write for, like, like if you look at Sarah in a piece of DLC, they had to be written kind of generically. It's kind of generic Sarah. Uh, it's Manic Pixie Sarah, not... Sarah as she exists at the end of the game, or she might exist in a different place. Um, and we can do a little bit, but here we, ha we actually have a lot more ability to know where you are with the character, um, and we can evolve and continue to grow these characters after launch uh, and bring them in into deeper and deeper progressions of their character arts. Mm -hmm. I'm actually really excited about what you can discover with these characters out there. Yeah, I am as well, actually. We didn't talk about Bryn yet. <laughs> oh yeah, I like Bryn. Yeah, because <laughs> actually we didn't really. We didn't, okay, Not so look. <laughs> all right. So there's agents. Um, you saw the pit crew. We talked about the pit crew, but agents are our way of of giving texture to the world. So agents will allow you. Um, this to, is not Bryn. No, no, that's, 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 that's definitely that's not Bryn. <laughs> um, which you should all know by now. Um, so agents allow you to discover more about the the world, about the game, about you know. The scar, or about the different factions, the sentinels, uh, all the different things that kind of make up this 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 living world that we have. So, Bryn is one of those agents, right? Yeah, she's um, she's kind of awkward. <laughs> Maybe some of us can uh, identify with that. Um, but I just I, like she was one of the first as the game started to come together that I I was I was doing reviews of our of our level design content, and suddenly it was like, whoa. I just want to spend more time with her. Um, and what I noticed was that the, the different agents, um, they, they will appeal to different people to different degrees. Um, and you will get to choose the missions that you go on based on how much you want to spend time with th those people. And if you spend more time with one out in the world, you'll get to know them deeper and their storyline will progress. Mm. So Bryn's a sentinel. Uh, Sentinels are another faction of Lancers, so they're another group that wear um, javelins. But they are more like um, the police force or the security force. They stay pretty close to Fort Tarsus. Um, they're more about keeping the populace safe from direct threats, uh, whereas the freelancers go out farther afield and deal with a little bit more of the weird stuff. Bring up the market shot. So that, that's a sentinel right there yeah. in the foreground, you know, just yeah, being in, beautiful. In the suit. And you'll see them out in the world as well. Actually, is that Bryn talking to the sentinel? I think so. That is oh, yeah. I actually think there so. There you go, there. That's Bryn right there. So enjoy the back of Bryn's head, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Probably should have looked at these shots before we showed them to you. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, Mike. No, it's I'm sass good. as always. It's all good. It's sass. Um, yeah, I mean, she's she's not the leader of all of the Sentinels either. So she's kind of a, a mid-level, a mid-level lieutenant, and she's she's doing her best to give you give you stuff to do. She trusts um, the freelancer. She trusts you, though. She trusts you in a way that yeah. others don't. It's yeah. good. And you get to build a friendship with her. Mm. Um, she she opens up very slowly in conversation, but I think you're even the first, very first freelancer that she's talking to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, but also all kidding aside, really, I mean, seriously, that uh, uh, the characters are really have great stories. They're absolutely true. It was written really well. Like, I'm telling you, uh, once you meet each and every one of them, they may appear a certain way, but as the story goes, you'll get to know them in a different way and you'll understand why they do what they do, which is, I, I found, which is fascinating. I love storytelling and I love good stories and I'm telling you it's just each character has its own issues, has its own demons and, 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 and in their own intentions as well and the way they mesh together is just brilliant, it's just brilliant. I think you guys are going to have a blast at playing it and watching it even. It almost feels like a movie and a game at the same time. It's really good. All right, another question and it's not about Halleck. Although I know you want to know about Halle, but anyway. 
How does Anthem influence games that comes after Bioware? So, you know, one of the things that we've really done in Anthem is focused a lot of um, attention on Fortarsis. It's uh, the primary um, place where we do the agents, the, the, the reactive storytelling. Um, and I think as a result, we've pushed Tarsus further than we've ever pushed any of our hubs uh, before. Uh, it's a more reactive space. It's a space that feels more living, more alive. And I think going forward in future uh, Dragon Age games or other games, that you are going to see that reactivity, that, um, that depth in our hubs that we've really been able to bring out in, uh, in Anthem. Yeah, and we, we, we've also got the continuation of stories after we've launched, and that's a big one. Um, if you remember back to the, to, the, to the ancient times, when we released a game, and then that would be the story for a certain set of characters, and then we would release DLC later, and we would be able to tell unique little bits of story afterwards. For Anthem, and kind of where, where, where I, think, I think we all kind of like to see us head, is the ability to continually tell new great stories throughout the year, throughout the months after launch, and do that so that players can just kind of eat it all up um, whenever we want. So for example, as a thought exercise, we have all these agents, we have these great pit crew. After Anthem, we could choose to say, okay, well now we're gonna expand a storyline for one of those agents. Or now that certain things in the game world have happened, remember our world, we can change it, this changes the relationship, or this changes the direction with a certain character, or this changes the type of missions that we can go on with certain characters. Or even, we add new characters, we add new agents. You know, there's a continuation with maybe Halleck and Faye after the, the main story. We can do all that. And Anthem gives us the tools to be able to do that. In fact, just at the studio yesterday, we have, we have these things called Anthem Friday, where everyone kind of plays the game together, and then we all kind of experience it. And for, for for halfway through that Anthem Friday, the folks who were in charge of the servers made a switch and they changed out a character and they brought in a storm. And it was actually pretty, pretty amazing to see that, that in real time, kind of, kind of how we can tell stories. And, and I don't know, this is just my opinion, is that I hope that the future games, whether it's Dragon Age or the other one that starts with Mass, um, continues <laughs> to, to, to utilize this kind of storytelling. I mean, it's... And I mean, you mentioned uh, players, and we hope that that is um, a nice opportunity for players. But as as a writer, like I'm so excited about the the opportunity to actually take these characters that are now established and quickly, like not like oh, okay, when we let out the next game or we let out the next DLC, that we can actually start to cross pollinate them in ways that we hadn't even considered, like. I, these characters um, in, in Tarsus, and many of them I did not write, so I'm not biased in that way, they're great. These are cr characters created by our Bioware character writers, and they are fantastic, and I can't wait to see more of them. And the opportunity of that in live service is really exciting. Equally with the ability to add gameplay into their arcs and continue to be, build missions that support and develop them, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to speak about Bryn again. Like, <laughs> when you're out with Bryn, she, like, she literally gives you... My wife's in the audience right down here, by the way. Sorry, wifey. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, uh, when you're out with Bryn in the world, um, she, she's the kind of person who will give you a bit of sass. Um, and, like, you know, she, she'll be like, you know, why did you miss that shot? Stuff like that while you're doing things. Whereas Yarrow is very much a kind of... You know, he's, he's somber and he's supportive and he really wants to rebuild the freelancers. Um, so, w we can really play into those arcs going forward for a very long time. So, SAS over support. Is that what uh, we're to take away? I like SAS. <laughs> well, it doesn't, matter, like it doesn't matter what Bryn does, apparently uh, uh, Victor's going to like it. Like. I'm embarrassing myself again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now to the fun part, guys. Now you get to ask questions, and when you do, please, there's a microphone here, and there's a microphone over there. Unless you feel compelled to go to the balcony and ask, then good luck with that. But please, just line up over here and ask questions. Don't be shy. Line up and ask questions. I know when I'm in a panel, I want to know things, all right? So tell us what you think. Just let's wait for a little bit till people line up a little bit. And so if, there's only like, shy. if there's only five or six questions, this panel's going to be really short. So <laughs> Come on, you can do it. 
You can do it. Line up. Come on. I don't want to be sick of <laughs> All right. All right. The happy gentleman right here. I am so excited to hear your question, man. You're, you look very excited. <laughs> I am excited. Go for it. <laughs> First of all, love being Spartacus. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, so this game is basically about player experience. You have missions you go out and you come back. Do you have to come back? Like, this is all about player experience. It's like, you complete a mission. Do you have to come back to Taurus? Do you have to, like, talk to somebody to get a mission? Or can you pull up a menu and get uh, a mission? I would like for you to come back to Tarsis. <laughs> 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 but you don't have to. <laughs> Uh, we have a mini forward base in the world inside of the Strider, um, and so you can you can stop off there to pick up new new quests and missions and go out. And the other option is uh, out in free play. You can get lost there for forever if you wish. Oh, yeah, but also, there's... like the role playing conversations, the ones where you deeply engage with the characters, those are actually optional. So if you're not a character, uh, a player that enjoys that that sort of thing, you you can skip it and still enjoy the world of Anthem without it. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't really talk about free play much up here. Um, after you're done a mission, you, if you don't go back, you can explore the world, you can try and find hidden areas. As, as Victor would say, you can faff about <laughs> as much as you want. Um, find, you know, lore and things like that, so, yeah. All right, uh, man, what was your name, man? Joshua. Thank you, Joshua. Thanks, Joshua. Thank you. All right, what's your name, sir? Chris. Chris, hello, Chris. Chris. Hey, everybody. Fire away, brother. Okay, so in the videos, I always see is groups of four that are always four individual uh, and different uh, javelins. Is there a way to say have a group of three rangers and a and a storm, or three storms and a ranger? Yeah, or? yeah absolutely. There's no restriction on that. Um, you can play with. If you want to play with all storms, you can do that. Um, that's definitely going to be a challenge in certain circumstances, uh, but there is no requirement for it to be a group of four. Uh, any of the, the missions can be played with any uh, number of uh, uh, javelins from one to four. Uh, there are, is some content that does require a party of four, but uh, the, the, the main story does not. Yeah. Cool, you, you can customize the heck out of each of them, so they'll all look different if you want them to. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, man. Lovely lady here with an awesome costume. Go for it. What's your name, darling? Savannah. Samantha, go for it. Um, so I'm an aspiring game designer, and I was wondering if it was much harder to, to design um, such a unique player experience like you do with, like, Dragon Age and, like, story-wise in such a multiplayer game. Yeah, so for this kind of game, it does take some of your... It is taking some of your tools off the table, or at least makes you more reluctant to use them. So in a Dragon Age game or a Mass Effect game, you can stop right in the middle of the mission and, and have a big conversation. Uh, you can't do that in a multiplayer setting because everyone is going to be ambushed by that, uh, and it, that's where multiplayer narratives tends to start to, to fall, fall apart. So you need to take some of these tools away uh, or at least restrict their use. Uh, so it does introduce new challenges. Yeah. I've been uh, grinding up against that question for quite a few years now, um, and uh, I would just say it presents a very different set of challenges. You know, um, whilst you whilst you you lose the ability to just completely, or at least you well, you don't completely lose it, but it's harder to to consume content completely at your own pace as an individual. Um, but then you you gain the coolness of being with your friends out in the world, and I think that's what Bioware games have always been about: is is being with friends. Okay, so, thank I don't you. Think that's changed. Thank you. Thank you. What's your name, sir? I'm Justin. Yo, Justin. Hey. Uh, so I've seen a lot of comparisons with this game to Destiny, but obviously this is a little bit more story focused where you have those kinds of options. How does the end game work, essentially, where you've beaten the story? Is there EX a raid, essentially? Like, how does that continue on once you've finished the story, but you want to keep playing with your friends? Yeah, so this is a game that's designed to be played for a long time. Um, after you finish the main story, there will still be missions to do um, with, with agents uh, and other stuff available from a storytelling perspective, but there will also be elder content. Uh, Strongholds is something we've already shown, which is designed as an elder content that you run uh, in order to get better loot and better equipment, make your er, javelins better and better and better. Uh, we'll be talking about some other elder content in the future, uh, which will be more uh, seasonally based, uh, where you'll, you'll 
you'll play for a season with more specific, um, higher level um, rewards available in that. So yes, it's definitely designed to have a long play uh, after you've finished uh, consuming the story. And I, I hinted at this a, a little bit earlier, but one, one of the innovations I'm, I'm really proud of on Anthem is that we've, we've created a system called Contracts. Uh, so if you want to continue to spend more time with your agent after like the very, very uh, bespoke story stuff has, 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 has like run out, um, you, can, you can load into the contracts with them and they will lead you on quasi-systemic um, missions out in the world. Um, and there are many, many ways those can play out. So, you know, you, it's kind of like a story light version um, of quests. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir, what's your name? Uh, my name is Eric. Yeah. I had a question sort of piggybacking off of his um, related to similar games. Um, the best or best looking equipment always seems to be locked behind incredibly hard uh, multiplayer content that not everybody can finish or that requires multiple hours and team coordination and planning. Will there be the cosmetic aspects or at least like, you know, a lesser, like lower version of the coolest items in the game that are available in the story or in the, you know, multiplayer area that maybe just have less stats than the ones you get from strongholds. Yeah, from from a cosmetic perspective, yes, um, but we don't want to give the players the opportunity to pay for power anyway. So obviously, gear and weapons and, and that kind of stuff you'll have to earn in the game, and you can you can grind out at at different things. So as Victor mentioned, there's the contracts. The contracts are not necessarily you know, high-end, elder game, super challenging stuff, but if you play enough of them, you'll get enough sweat currency in-game to actually buy some of those cooler things. So there's the al so there's the alternative ways that you can get it besides just doing the hardest content in the game? Yes, but there will, there will be some content which Fairly. is still locked behind that. So as we've mentioned before, we have strongholds. Those are four players. Mm -hmm. Strongholds will give certain things especially, mm -hmm. but there's gonna be other ways to get those things. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. Good name, brother. Hey, so my name is Chase, and I have a question for you as a team. After an Anthem Friday, or you guys are playing, what do you find are the recurring conversations and things you're talking about that are interesting or on the water cooler? Like, there's something that's just grabbing you, gameplay-wise or otherwise. Good question. Wow. I, I often just get people going like, oh, wow, I didn't even know we had that mission in the game. Like, um, <laughs> I... Uh, Actually, no, I can't, I can't even talk about those things without giving you spoilers, and I'm really keen not to spoil. Um, but, well, there was, there was a moment... But it's about there was surprise, a moment that came right? Up. Right. It's about, it's about the, the whole team coming together and seeing... Because our team is enormous. We have programmers, we have QA, we have writers, we have designers, we have... And so everybody sees their own pocket of the game as they're creating it. And then on Anthem Fridays, we come together, and we play it, and it's about surprise. Absolutely. It's like a celebration, really. We come yeah. together and we celebrate the game we make together, and then we kind of spin off of that, like, what can we do to make it even better? Uh, I, get a lot of, um, I get a lot of little stories about the kind of systemic content stuff that comes up, because that can play out just so many different ways. Um, so as you do those individual, uh, what we call world events, um, you, you can do them at any place in the world, and all of the different arenas and spaces for combat all play out very differently. So I'll get people coming and they'll be like, oh God, I had to fight the uh, six that you saw on screen before, the big bear looking thing. Um, and I had to do that like inside of ancient ruins. So it was like a labyrinth. And it was like being trapped in, in there with a, with a minotaur. Yep. So you say it however you want. Yeah. 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 You, you, can, you can say it, as, you can faff about it as you want. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we call them anthem moments. Like, and, and now that the, the game is really starting to come together as a whole thing, people are getting more of them. So. So I had a man, an anthem moment last week where uh, I was out on a mission uh, to do a certain thing in the in the world, which I won't spoil. And then um, uh, it's like some fog came in, and then this area was just just foggy and dangerous. And I was locked down, and I was trying to defend a point. And you had all these these creatures kind of bursting through the fog, and I had to fend them off. It was like just kind of this weird weird, you know. Nightmare? Yeah, n nightmare. <laughs> but like when all when all the right systems kind of come together yeah. and it creates this really cool experience that you you remember and you're like, oh yeah, we all have those and we share them. Cool. 
Yeah, I mean, really, this kind of game, one thing it does <laughs> is it <laughs> gives you deals. moments of storytelling that are created by your experiences as opposed to by the, uh, the character moments or the interactions you have with specific characters. Thank you. But Chase, to tell you that, the, the abbreviated answer, everybody gets together and talk about Halleck. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what will happen. That's the real truth. Yeah. But that's, that's cute, too. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, Young man. Hi, I'm Chris. Uh, Chris? You, yeah. Well, how old are you, Chris? 15. You're going to get the best question from this guy, I bet you. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Go for it, Chris. So you've told us a lot about how you can, like, customize the story to how you want to play it. But how can you, like, customize the action to your play style? And Ooh, if, good question. Look at this. <laughs> 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 uh, Future. Future, right here. Uh, yeah. So some of that is based upon the uh, the javelin. Wait, sorry, I didn't even catch that question. Can you? Really <laughs> <laughs> so it was uh, how do you customize your your gameplay? How do you customize your okay your adventure? Oh. Yeah, so I'll, some of that comes down to the javelin you pick, um, and then more importantly is the, the gear you equip on that javelin. So if you take a Colossus uh, and equip um, uh, like a piece of gear that lets you control people's aggro, and you put on a flamethrower, and you put on a mortar, uh, that's going to play a lot differently and let you play a much more up-close and personal kind of uh, stand and deliver kind of gameplay than if you go and you pick an interceptor, which is quick and nimble and is just zipping around. Uh, there's, you can really customize your experience to the, the, uh, the, the kind of specific play style you're looking for. Yeah. All right, thank you. No problem. Chris, that was an amazing question. I think everybody felt the same way. A round of applause for Chris. Thanks, Chris. Go, Chris. Good luck, my friend. After Chris, good luck with that. What's your name? Uh, my name is Rudy. I was going to say I liked you in The Expanse, but I think I might take that back now. <laughs> no spoilers, no spoilers. Um, Thanks a lot, man. Just a question around, you mentioned the, around new stories after launch that can come out uh, to keep, the, keep the, the party going, and so, sorry? A bit closer, sorry. Um, and so I just wanted to uh, check in around um, like microtransactions or uh, additional, you have to pay $30 in order to uh, experience that story. And so you know, there's a lot of debate around microtransactions, like you have to pay five bucks to get rid of your helmet if it looks stupid. And so I just wanted to like delve in that as a consumer in terms of someone who plays a lot of games and like, you know, I find microtransactions can be very annoying. And so in a game like this, just wanted to get your feedback on that and if that's gonna take place. Yeah, so, um, so no loot boxes, so there's no no um, uh, random. Uh, there, there will be some cosmetic stuff that you can pay for. Um, so uh, it will always be earnable. So, so we might give you the ability to um, uh, short circuit out of using sweat currency. You'll be able to earn sweat currency to buy cosmetics, uh, but we will let you also uh, spend money on those. For storytelling, um, we don't want to uh, divide up the audience. We want people to be able to experience the same story at the same time. So none of that's going to be locked behind any kind of paywall. Yeah. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks a lot, brother. What's your name, sir? I'm Kyle. Say what? I'm Kyle. Kyle. What's your question? Uh, so uh, a lot of people seem to compare the game to Destiny, but uh, I have been trying to think about it more in terms of other Bioware franchises. So The Old Republic, for me, uh, was the narrative multiplayer game that is like precedent to this. Uh, and in The Old Republic, the story beats were always still sort of very static. Uh, when you're playing in groups, um, it would do like roles. So you pick a dialogue option, and then whoever won the role for that dialogue got to influence how the story is going. So in Anthem, are there story beats that are sort of group content, or is it all going to be solo tied into the hub? So, so you will get some story delivered delivered when you are in a group, but it will always be, um, that will be, that story that's delivered when you are in a group together will not have branching in it. So you're not gonna get these weird like, but you totally ruined my entire storytelling experience because you went left and I would have gone right and now I don't even know what to do with myself. So that will never, that doesn't ever happen to you. Uh, but there is storytelling in the open world, in the, on missions. Um, you experience it together at the same time. Yeah. Okay, so the, the open world stuff will all be sort of static story beats that's group, and then for the customized story, that's all in uh, Tarsus. Yes, yes, in Tarsus Absolutely. or uh, in, the, in the Strider. In that's the where the branching uh, uh, happens, and that's a single player experience. Yeah, and that, that's on purpose. That's by design. That's how we want to actually be able to tell the story here. 
you don't need to do them in order either. You can like choose to go do Britain's mission, then maybe Yarrow's next one. So you don't have to do like everything in order either. Cool. Thank you. Thanks a lot, brother. What's your name, sir? Uh, my my that's name. Okay. That's okay. You can create a name. We don't uh, know. We don't know. <laughs> my name is uh, Kyle as well. So. Okay. Hey, Kyle. <laughs> um, go for it, man. Well, for uh, more players that like don't always have friends on at the same time. Are there matchmaking systems in place to uh, do, do the harder content with, uh, in case you're on at odd hours? Yeah, what a, so we, what a we'll, great question, Kyle. It's like you were a plant for us in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. So absolutely, that is a great question. Yep. And oh, you, and we'll which get Mark can there. now answer for you. Yes. <laughs> um, so there will be matchmaking for all, um, all content, including things like Strongholds and other Elder Game play. Um, So you will be able to join up with your friends uh, if that's the way you prefer. But if you just want to quickly go in and you, and and play with uh, with with other people, we'll be we'll give you options and, and ways to bring people together quickly, get into the content uh, and experience it. And Thank you'll you. also be able to support as well, right? Like to uh, to jump in to support. That's right. Reinforce. Who's, who's yeah. yeah. So we have something called reinforcements. So if someone is um, uh, playing a mission, you will be able to join a mission in progress uh, because that just because of the nature of the uh, of the world, uh, a freelancer can kind of come flying over the horizon. You'll be able to basically do that. Come and join them mid-mission, or, or have someone come and join you mid-mission to to help you out. Mm. Thank Sweet. you. And Thank by, you. By the way, Kyle, Fortress is a single player. What's your name, sir? Fort I'm Sawyer. Go for it, Sawyer. All right. So in Bioware's <laughs> previous entries, we've had a character that's kind of been almost locked into a role that we can expand on and play how we want and this. develop in a way that we feel fits us. In Anthem, are we going to be sort of locked in that same constraint where it's like Shepard, where we're a military commander and we, we play that military commander specifically the way we want, or is it going to be more open? So you are a freelancer, uh, specifically. Uh, you have a, a certain amount of um, back history, the stuff that, that's happened with you and Faye and Halleck uh, before the story starts. That's the same for everyone. The way you behave as a freelancer is relatively open. Um, however, you are a freelancer. A freelancer means a certain number of things. So, so uh, I, I realize I'm sort of dancing around your question, but uh, so you are a freelancer, you, but uh, and which means that you are constrained in the way you behave to a certain degree. Uh, but what you do, who you interact with, the missions you take, this is all open to you. Excellent. Sweet, thank you. sweet. Thank, thank you. you. Sir, what's your name? Josh. Hey, Josh. Uh, so I just wanted to ask, is there a way you could give us an idea of how large the map is or maps? So I realize that this has been asked on Twitter before, and I've never actually given an answer, and I'm not going to give one now. And I'll tell you why, <laughs> um, because I find that it's not a particularly useful piece of information. Uh, so again, I'll, and, and I'll tell you why I don't think it's a particularly useful piece of information uh, for two reasons. One, you have a jetpack, so so what it actually means you can fly. You're actually pretty fast, um, which would you would think would make you. Um, consume the space really fast. So if I told you if it was really big, uh, it would potentially be, be uh, exaggerating the size of the world. And, but the other thing that the, that jetpack actually lets you do is move vertically. It's a very vertical world. So that actually, what you find is when you fly over space, you, you basically feel like you've not even been through it. And if you come through later and on the ground, it feels very different. Sometimes even if you come through later at a different altitude flying through it, it feels very different. So as a result of all of that, the specifics of like the square footage of the world, I don't feel is a particularly useful um, uh, number to provide. So that's why we haven't provided it. I just think yeah. it's uh, we it also actually provides more we'd... confusion than it actually provides clarity. We'd be yeah. better off measuring in volume. Yeah, uh, it's like Swiss cheese, the world. So yeah. you know, not to you, mention uh... the big lakes, <laughs> the pools, right? That you yeah, yeah, exactly. Like yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, About... I think Mark hit it on the head where you're usually going with an intention to a place. So you will fly between the places you want to be in, and you'll be like, oh, that was pretty little, uh, that was a pretty valley I just flew over, and later it will bring you there. And you're like, whoa, that's a fully realized, detailed combat arena, and I didn't even notice. It will look different in nighttime and night uh, daytime as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. 
whether it has Sweet. an impact on that. Thank you. Thank you. We got five minutes. We're gonna to try to get everybody. Sir, what's your name? My name is Rue. All right. Uh, All right. My question is like, does the ideals of the different factions actually matter? Like, do they are they at end on some ideals? Yeah, uh, I would say yes. Um, so we play as a freelancer, but right off the top, you realize that uh, as um, Vic mentioned, oh, as Vic mentioned earlier, that. Um, the freelancers are kind of on hard times when we start because of the beginning of our crit path story. And in fact, the Sentinels, and Bryn is a Sentinel, and we saw a Sentinel in that shot, the Sentinels are, they look down on the freelancers and they don't tend to, to uh, collaborate with them. So, um, and then we have the Corvus uh, faction who um, work in mysterious ways. So yeah, I would say that, that that's true. The, the factions do actually um, matter. Although you will always play as a freelancer because they're the best faction. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, the other the other point I hit there um, before was that each when you're playing missions with a different faction, they have a different tone. So if you're playing with the freelancers, yes. you're going to be like paying respect to to fallen soldiers. You're going to be doing things which are which are heroic. Um, and uh, you know, if you're with Sentinels, you're going to be maintaining the upkeep. You're going to be basically creating, a, trying to make the world safer. And if you're fighting scars, you're like, what the. Frickin' hell is going on. Yeah. <laughs> or, or Arcanists, you, you play with Arcanists and you realize a lot of stuff about Shaper and Shaper technology. And Arcanists are useless and they always get lost in the world and you have to go rescue them and it's just a pain. Yeah. <laughs> and, try, and try to remember all these names while we're memorizing this name and try to perform it. It was like, what? Who, who's what? Okay. Good stuff. You, sir. <laughs> Uh, my name is Matt. Uh, I was wondering, we've talked a lot about the freelancers today. What more can you tell us about the enemies of the game? Yeah, so there are three prime, well, okay, there's basically four primary enemy factions. Uh, there's Scars, uh, which we showed at E3. Uh, they are um, these, they've something that they've come through a, uh, a, a... They've been created by chaos. There you go. <laughs> they've been created by chaos. They are trying to sort of emulate humans, but they are not humans. They are um, They're not really people. intelligence. They're like this weird kind of insect mimic. Um, there's the Dominion, which is a uh, enemy faction up to the north uh, that are trying to harness the uh, the the Anthem's power uh, to you know nefarious ends. Um, there are outlaws, so there are bandits that live out in then sort of scratch out a living through smuggling. Uh, and then there are the the animal factions, the, so which is which are and when I say animal, I mean basically monsters. Uh, these are go from everything from an Ursix, which is a bear the size of a truck, to uh, to down to to the, uh, the gravits, which are rabbits that will eat you. It's sharp, the sharpest <laughs> teeth you've ever seen. Cute and vicious. Yep. Yeah. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, brother. All right, sir, go for it. What's your name? Uh, my name is Nathan. Nathan, what's your question? Uh, so the game seems to be pretty nonlinear. How nonlinear is it when it comes to missions? Like, are there multiple ways to tackle different missions? Um, Based on the missions being in the open world, yes, you can you can attack missions from a various different ways. Once you actually get to a certain point on a mission, you kind of have to do the thing that they're asking you to, but you can totally hit it in different ways, especially if you're with a group of other javelins of different types. So, for example, if you're playing with a Colossus and your friend is is an interceptor, you would go in and you'd basically, you know, take the tank damage as much as possible. The interceptor would come around back and, and you know, ninja them from the back. And like Sabina said, you don't actually have to take the missions in specific orders. Some of them you do, but for the most part, you can kind of jump between different agents and do different things in different order. Okay, thank you. No problem. You're quite welcome. What's your name, sir? Uh, my name is Dylan. Uh, my question is, I know you mentioned a lot of the um, environments that everyone experiences at the same time, like the rain. Are there also gonna be other living ecosystems that kind of change as the world progresses? Or is it just kind of be very, fairly static. Well, one thing that's present throughout free play is that every different area of the world favors different factions. Um, we can update that on, in real time. Um, so there, there are a few different things, but that's, that's one that I really like. Um, there's, you, there's an answer to that question that we're not ready to talk about, but <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Soon, soon. Thank you. Yes, what's your name? I'm Sarah Marie. Uh, I kind of going off of that question, sort of following up, uh, can we anticipate to see really uh, extreme earth shattering events uh, in this dangerous world, in these environments? 
and how is that going to affect gameplay? Same answer. Uh, well, exactly. Well, same well, same answer. Answer. That's like oh, oh, oh. How old are you? <laughs> no comment. Not 15? <laughs> okay. I, I believe, sorry, yes, you're, that's a great question. <laughs> that we're not going to answer. Yeah, not really. <laughs> uh, I think we have time for, for one more. Are they going to cut our mics or something? And then they're going to cut <laughs> our mics and do the cane thing where we have to get off stage. So. <laughs> or we can move super fast. Go for it. Hi, my name is Paul, and I wanted to know if other than changing how you look and changing the gear you have, if you could change other quote unquote traditional RPG elements about your character, such as a career or a job or specific stats or other so, things like that. Uh, the, the, um, the freelancer actually has a uh, skill tree that you actually uh, unlock as you level up. So yes. Thank you. Okay, so we will we'll wrap it here. Um, I have a question for you, Mike. No. Ooh. When is, the, uh, is the, the, the demo coming out? Oh, right. Um, the demo is coming out on February 1st, 2019. Such so, a softball. So that's, it, it's a while for the actual demo, but that's going to be the demo. That's not a beta or an alpha or anything like that. We do have tests that are coming before that, which you may or may not hear about. Um, so that's, that's where we're at now. Before everyone leaves, we wanted to give you a huge thanks for coming out and seeing us. We really appreciate it. For all the Bioware folks, um, yeah. Yeah, we, we love your support of Mass Effect and Dragon Age and Tor, and we hope that you'll kind of come on this journey with us with Anthem. So thank you. See you guys later. Have a great time. I'm sorry we missed your question. So sorry we missed your question, guys, but thank you. <laughs>